Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have a conversation with Rob and Williams in the afterlife. We're going to talk about 2022. See if we can get any kind of insights, any scoops for what's coming up. Okay. Oh, my nose is tickly. Somebody must be thinking about me. Hmm. All right, I'm going to check my microphone. I'm going to turn up the sensitivity here. Hopefully, you can hear me okay. My new mic here. All right, so let's bring in Mr. Robin Williams. So I was getting coffee this morning and in fact, I have it. Let me grab it. Let me grab it. Let me grab it. If you don't already watch me on, oh, it's gone. It's empty. My cup is empty. Oh, I can't pour from an empty cup. If you don't already watch, I have a podcast on Sundays. Usually it's an audio, but sometimes it is a video. So it's on Sunday mornings with me and it's here. There's a playlist on intuitive talk topics. So if you need some encouragement or pick me up, but I was pouring coffee, getting coffee ready this morning. And um, I was trying to think of who do I want to talk to about the new year and to give us some, you know, inspiration, encouragement, hope. And right away, I'm like, Robin Williams would be great. So we're going to talk to him. Okay, so he, um, he's a bit scruffy in appearance. So, you know, I'm clairvoyant. So the first thing, when I make contact with spirit, I usually see them. Okay, and when I see them, I don't, he does not coming here sitting across from me, like you would be sitting across from me where I'd be like, offering you a chocolate or something or giving you some coffee, that kind of thing. It's different. It's in the mind's eye energetically. It's like, a, it's the third eye. So it's different. And uh, he looks a little scruffy and he's got like a cap on, um, don't know how to describe it. Is it a newsboy hat? You know, the hats that are just kind of flat in the front, like old man hats. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what else to describe those as. Like, well, you know, the brim is just like, it's not like a baseball hat. It just kind of comes in the, I don't know what it's called. Put it below if you know what it's called, the type of hat, that's what he's wearing. And, He's not cleanly shaven, so he's scruffy. Okay. He just seems relaxed, is that how I'm seeing him? Casual, mm, philosophical, a bit like outdoorsy. Yeah, I'd say it that way, outdoors like. Is there a reason for that, for the appearance? He says, Haven't we been through about enough? He says, <laughs> He's referring to the pandemic, right? Uh, yes, isn't that, he says, isn't that what you want to talk about? That seems like what everybody wants to talk about. He says, um, looking back, he said, looking back over this time, it's, it's got to be hard. He said, it's got to be hard. It's got to feel like a train wreck. Or uh, he's showing me um, like a multi-car kind of just sliding in the ditch kind of thing and semi's jackknifed and all that. He's using that analogy of like a snow blizzard highway with tons of cars and semis and all that just kind of off on the sides and nobody's really going much of anywhere. Nobody can because they're just kind of sliding even when they're stopped. They're just sliding off the edge of the highway. And he's using that imagery to describe what we've been through already. Okay, so what we've been through is that. That's really good. Thanks for that image. Like, yeah, well, it's it's accurate, isn't it? Yeah, it is it's very accurate. Yes. Okay. So we're starting with reflection, and you're starting. Like, I'm not even asking you questions, and you're just showing me this. Okay. So what do you feel that we have learned, we as humanity, Robin, over the course of this last time? And are we looking at 2021? He's saying 2020 into 2021. He says it's kind of like a big lump, it's a big clump of a year. It's really two, but it's like a clump, right? So what have we learned? Can you share from your reflections from the afterlife perspective, from the spirit perspective, what, what we as humans have learned? He says, it's more of what you haven't learned, he says. You would think that this could move along rather quickly if you would all pay attention. He says, some of the humans are not doing their homework. And it's screwing it up. It's like, you say, like, this is a group project, you guys. It's a group project. You're supposed to be collaborating and you're screwing it up. 
So the people that are doing their work are not going to be able to carry you lazy. And he literally says the A word. I, I don't know if I should sh swear on, on um, YouTube because I don't know if that will, if they'll flag me or not. So he usually uses the word that starts with an A and ends with holes. So you bums, I'm going to say you bums, you big jerks that aren't doing your work. The people who are, are tired of carrying you. You're dead weight to them. And so the people who are doing their work who are evolving and growing are now starting to leave places. Oh, leave places. Is this why you're talking about why COVID, the pandemic has caused relationships and marriages to break up. It's caused people to leave their jobs in mass numbers. It's caused people to move to different areas, um, especially people who are now like working from home or that kind of thing, or have had to move because of economic hardships and with family and go different places where it's more affordable. But he's making a nod to Tim Allen in the movie Santa Claus, which is a movie I watch like all the time, constantly, constantly watching it. So he's making a nod to that, like check, 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 -ity check. So uh, anyway, that was really sweet. That was, I think that was a personal thing for me. <laughs> That's sweet. Oh, thank you. Oh, that was so sweet. Okay, thank you. All right, so the people who've been doing their work are moving on and the people who haven't are what, what's happening. Like he says, that's why there's a division. So you look back, he says, you understand now what's happening, right? People are, are dividing. He says, it's not because we don't believe the same things. It's because we're not doing this or, or you know, stereotypical kinds of um, experiences or things or, or regional or cultural or even political or religious. He says things that are kind of typically where people kind of group together. He says that creates division naturally. It's like, a I would say sorting and sift, shift, sorting and sifting through things like an organizational thing, but he's showing it as there's literally people who are doing their work and people who are not. So talk to me about this, doing the work. It seems like in other relationships with my kids or at home and you know there, it seems like more stuff is showing up then the more i do my work the more stuff is showing up i'm focusing on this and all of a sudden over here there's three other things talk to us about doing our work what does that mean it's not neat it's not organized he says it's not it can't be organized while well, the brain, the mind would like you to believe that things are organized. It can come in a fashion where there's some kind of structure. Intellectually, he says, yes, that's what the mind needs. Yes, that's what the human experience calls for is some kind of structure, right? He says, but that's occurred through belief patterns and, and thought processes and, and, and reoccurring Um, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure how to describe this. Reoccurring thoughts or values that are projections onto you based upon what your parents and their parents and their parents have believed based upon their experiences. So now there's a, he says, there's a layering of old belief systems that are coming from three generations up, he's saying. So it's not just you, like me as my, my experience in my 40 plus years on the planet, but my parents and then their parents. So it's us and then the generation above you so your parents and then your parents parents that are really affecting you a lot right now he's like it's coming down to be cleared cleared away and he says but the pressure of all of these things is causing a a confusion and conflict in the mind with the old values and belief systems and what's happening now is you can't only as a human rely upon your mind and values that have been created and belief systems over three generations, yours, your parents or grandparents, to continue to support you as you grow and evolve now into the next place because you've collectively been through a catastrophic event, the pandemic, and you are now rebuilding. Everything's been burned to the ground and you are now rebuilding, yet there are still structures and things in place that you look at that represent and symbolize the old patterns or ways of thinking. It's not that the old patterns are all bad, everything has to be gone, but radical and dramatic change is required and that's what you're seeing unfolding now, which is creating unsettledness. He says it makes you not comfortable but it's your brain that's not comfortable. It's the generations above you that's not comfortable that the pressures of those generations that you carry within you is what is, is coming out now. 
and not what is inside you. It has to clear the waste that your pure values and belief systems connected to your source, God, which some people would say, universe, cosmic consciousness, prime creator, collective oneness, whatever that is for you, but that, that part of you, that piece of you that is your soul, that you refer to as your soul, that is your light, has to be able to shine up to create a clear pathway for you then to receive in your mind the aligned thoughts that are going to then create your future. It's not that you're living for the future. You are very clearly living for today. But what's happening is, is you're trying to get to today, but your thoughts are in the past, whether it be your life experience when you were 12 or 16 or 22 or 30 or whatever it was, he says, in this lifetime, or whether it be your parents' experiences that they projected on you while you were going through high school or while you were getting married and what marriage looks like and what raising children looks like, what being a parent looks like. There's a lot of ways to be a parent and it's not just biological, right? And yet there's so many judgments and values and old belief systems that are stuck in old ways of this is the way, this is the way, which, which then by default, all the other ways aren't the way, which means they're not good, they're not right, they're not in alignment. There's all sorts of, of assumptions that we have made. We, our generation, you, your generation, whatever yours is. Assumptions you've made based upon what has been the leading or dominant way of things. And all that's happening now is all the diversity of ways is coming up and everyone is trying to figure out how their way, their perspective of the world, their values and belief systems fit into the greater whole. And there is, he says, there is a piece for everyone of this puzzle. There is a place at the table for everyone literally. But right now you're all collectively dealing with your old SH, your old stuff. <laughs> he swears. I want to swear so bad, but I don't know what the rules are on YouTube right now on my above life channel. So I don't want to get like, you know, tisk tisk Bridget, not he. because this is an important message to get across. We're all dealing with our stuff, you guys. We're all dealing with our own healing. And we still have to show up at work, at the office, for the kids, at the conferences, making sure they're getting their schoolwork done for the mental health stuff that everybody needs right now because everybody's brains is going. Like it's literally like, it's not blowing up, you guys. Don't blow up your life. Don't radically change your brain in one fell swoop. That, would, that is what we would call, he says, a mental health crisis or through disease. And that's what's happening. People get disease, pandemic, and it forces change. Rapid, instant change, right? And some people are catalysts for change for others. So if you have a loved one that has died or suffered because of the pandemic, your job is to learn from that experience and to take stock of your own values and belief systems and the rigidity in which you've lived your life from another perspective, from your grandparents, from your parents, from your grandparents, not yours, what's not yours, it's just not yours. You've been living a life through no fault of your own using instructions that are outdated. Your technology is new. The instructions that you're reading is from three versions ago. It doesn't make sense. Think about your car, think about your computer, think about your cell phone. If you were trying to do things that you did with your flip phone <laughs> on your iPhone, it's not going to work, okay? It's just not going to work. The old ways do not work effectively. So it's time for updates. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. He says, I want to be really, really clear. This is not bad. Stop making change mean something bad. Stop making the discomfort mean you're doing something wrong because you're not. Start, he says, the antidote for this is to get curious, to be open and curious. And like he brings a, a phrase that I bring, I bring up for myself sometimes. I'm like, let the universe surprise and delight me. Like sometimes when I'm stressing out or when I'm, especially when I'm traveling, I get all nervous, you know, the travel thing, the TSA stuff and the checking your bags and getting on the plane and the people you have to sit next to and how's it going to be and everything going to be on time. There's all all that stuff for me, right? 
So I will usually say to myself, let the universe surprise and delight me. Bring me good experiences. Let me meet interesting, kind people. That's it, right? Let the universe surprise and delight me. Like that is a way to welcome and embrace the unknown by being playful with it. Letting your approach be softer, not don't touch me, get away from me. No, you know, there's a difference between letting everybody just be in your space and no, get away from me, go away, go away, being negative. Because negativity is a way that people keep others away from them. They might not actually have a negative attitude or be a really negative person. They're using negative energy and negative thoughts and words and vibes to keep you away from them. They might not really be bad people per se. Okay. Well, this is really good stuff, Robin. I'm loving this. Okay. I'm loving this. All right. So moving forward, what can we do? Like, as we're ending one year and stepping into another year, which this video could be viewed by anybody at any time. And so a transition place, you know, this idea of reflection and understanding how things are going, that's really helpful, how things are changing. What can we expect stepping into the new year? He says, new. He says, you got that right. Don't expect the old, the same old, same old. He says, Step in new. And he's saying, but in order to be new, in order to have the new, you have to be willing to let it in. He's not saying to let go of the old. He's saying literally you have to let, to let it in. He's saying let in the new, let in the new, like ring in the new year, ring in energetic vibration that is new, just like the experiences that we've co-created that have been negative, harsh, intensive, massive lessons, massive learning, massive impacts on our mental health, on our physical health, on our relationships, everything, just crazy change, in intensity, collective healing process, right? Let in the new, let the universe come to you. Like let good things come in. What we would perceive as good, he doesn't say good, but you know, let, let yourself feel good. I have no idea why he's showing me this. I see something that looks like a kid's, like a, it's like a land, be a land before time vibe is what I'm getting, like the little dinosaur. And I don't remember that movie. I remember it vaguely, the land before time, little dinosaur. He showed me a dinosaur. What is that about? It's green with yellow on it. Because at first I'm like, is it a serpent? Is it a dragon? Some people's dinosaurs are another person's dragons. So what is that? It's like allow in this whimsical, imaginative, creative life experience. He says, we got so serious. He said, when did humans become so serious that they can't even allow themselves? You guys can't let your guard down. He says, it's, that's not what's, that's not the point. You're holding on too tight. He says, Hold it on too tight. And there are things that are going to come up for people and that will continue and consistently come up for people about your childhood, about life that you've lived up to this point, about the past, things that you've experienced. That's naturally says, don't hold on to them. That is the best piece of advice that I could possibly give to you. He says, it's Robin Williams in the afterlife. Do not hold on to stuff that comes up just to be healed or cleared. You don't have to work hard at it and really figure it out and put it in its place. Just be aware, acknowledge it. And let yourself, if there's feelings related to it, let them come up and be expressed and don't hold on to them. Don't be a hoarder with the past memories that are coming through with the good ones too. He says, ah, the good ones are like medicine for your soul, right? He says, the good ones are like medicine, but they're not gonna go away. They're gonna still be with you in your heart, but they'll be part of your whole, the whole system, not an individual thing, but the whole system of you. So he says, yes. And the ones that aren't good, they're coming up to be healed. And that doesn't mean hold on to them, look deeply, put them under a microscope and take a look at them and see, okay, let's see whose fault this was. Let's make sure I can get to a place where I can 
really let myself just heal because healing isn't a one-time event. You've heard me say this. If you follow me on Fairy Grasshopper, people, my Fairy Grasshopper YouTube channel, you know, healing is not a one-time event. It is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. And it's not bad. It's not heavy and intense all the time. It's, it's making healthy choices. It's being aware of your thoughts and your attitude. It's taking care of your body, resting when you're tired. It's about pushing yourself to try different things, maybe intellectually, like taking a class. And I mean, just, it's a lot of things. Healing is a lot of things. It's not hardship, you guys. Stop associating healing with hardship. It's the path of freedom for your fullest expression. So you can feel more happy and uplifted. So that when bad crap happens, you can handle it in a way that it does not devastate you. It doesn't. You can resource yourself in a healthy and productive way. When you understand that healing is a, just this, this lifestyle. It's like wellness is. It's not an event or an experience, okay? It doesn't have to be isolated like that or separated like that. Okay. Wow, okay. Hmm. New. So this is an opportunity, I think, too, to do some journaling and things when you think about what's next for you, maybe, and in stepping into the new year. Giving yourself as much tenderness as you can and leeway as you can but also challenging yourself a bit with the curiosity and the innovation, the imagination, not to fix or solve a problem or to run away from something that you're tired of or what have you, but to just face the days in a, in a different way. Because the way we've been doing stuff is not working. So let's try something different. And you need an innovative spirit, a creative sense of yourself in order to do that. And the imagination piece, you might need to tap that inner child. And so when you do tap that inner child of you that plays, you might get some stuff. You might have some things come up, some painful memories or things come up where you have been stifled or felt like other people's other generations, whether it be a teacher in your grandparents' generation or what have you, say some things to you about your creativity or your inability to write, or that you're not a writer, or you're not a dancer, or you're not this person, or you're not that person that you've kept as part of your identity when really it's not. It was just one person's projection. That's all it was. And so when something like that comes up or a memory like that comes up to challenge you as you're being curious and creative, just recognize yourself as, a, as, as any eternal, how about an ethereal student, a playful, whimsical, whimsical person that has a curiosity about life. And if you come from that perspective, then it's easy to be able to let that energy move along, not to hang on to it and keep it as part of your identity, and then to keep moving forward. And that's it. Okay. It's just information. It's not meant to throw you deep into a spiral. It's just information. Okay. Those memories that come up, they're just info. All right. Mm -hmm. They're not intended to stop you. It doesn't mean, oh, I'm not supposed to do this because I'm having this hard experience about it. No, that's not what it means. It means it's an opportunity to show up for yourself. Let's see what you've learned. Show up for yourself. Love yourself. Be present for yourself. Give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Cut yourself some slack. Let yourself feel things without making the feeling your entire identity. Okay? Just because you feel bad doesn't mean you are bad. It's because you feel bad or the feelings feel bad and you would judge yourself for the feelings, it doesn't mean you are bad, that you're a bad person, that you're a, a, a mean person. Hmm. That's not what that means. Hey, thanks, Robin. I appreciate this. This is great. This is a great video. All right, you guys. So thank you so much for being here on Above Life channel on YouTube. I appreciate you very much. I hope we've inspired your spirit today and filled you with some hope. I look forward to chatting with some of you in the new year as I am an intuitive life coach and a psychic medium. If you would like some information about my services or you just want to jump in and do a session, you can go to my Facebook page where you can book directly with me. I have a link on Facebook at Bridget Inspired where you can book session with me in the new year. All right. Remember, it's your life after all. This is your life and you get to live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Robin. Appreciate you. Always interesting. So philosophical today. <laughs>